In this video, I'm going to share five things that I wish I knew when I started working in Adobe Fresco. If you're new to this channel, my name is Chris Piasek. I've been a professional illustrator for the past 15 plus years. I've worked with clients like Google, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Adobe, and tons more. I don't really know why I'm mentioning this to you right now. I just feel like I should say it every now and then. Anyway, I do nearly all of my work in Adobe Fresco, and I kind of love that. So let's head over to my iPad and get into these tips and tricks and uh, just uh, stuff, you know? All right, let's go. Okay, so let's say you're working on this sweet wolf drawing and you're like, using a real gritty brush, like this um, rough builder from the Retro Supply Co. Woodland Wonderland set. And you drew through some lines over here and you're like, oh, I'll just go back in and erase those. So you grab your eraser and then you erase it, but it doesn't look right there because the eraser is a clean line. So you undo that and you're like, okay, well, maybe I can try one of these other ones, like the sponge. And you're like, well, Maybe it's a little better, but it's not perfect. What you want is to match this line perfectly. So instead of switching to the eraser, all you have to do is hold your touch modifier, and then you can just come in here and erase what you don't want, and it'll match your line work perfectly. You can also double tap and just stay in eraser mode as long as you have that activated, and then you could just hit it again and get rid of it. So you can come in, fix any of those areas you want to, Again, just by holding it or by double tapping it, and then you can do multiple things at once. So if you're just going to come through and do like a cleanup session after the fact, you could do that. So I'll come back in here and draw the rest of these teeth. Like that, and let's say we drew through again. I'll just hold the touch modifier, erase that, and now the texture is clean and consistent throughout the illustration. And that leads me to the next thing I wished I knew, which is using reference layers to color in line work like this. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and tap on this layer and then set it as a reference. And then I can go in and make a new layer. And now if I use the paint bucket to fill this in, it's gonna do it on the layer below. So. If I go ahead and tap here, you'll see that it fills below and is separate from my line work, which is a really nice thing to have happen. And before we finish that, that brings me to the third thing that I wish I knew, and that is this little thing that pops up that you may have not even noticed when you're using the paint bucket. This is the color margin. You can use this to adjust your fill to get rid of any like edges on on the side if you're using like a textured brush like this one so for example if we zoom in you'll see there's a little bit of a halo around the edges with this fill you can go ahead and push this and it'll move it further in and get rid of those extra halo spaces which is a super handy feature so i'll come in and fill in the rest of this stuff Now you'll notice here, because I didn't draw a line separating the ear from the rest of the hair, and I wanna make those ears pink, I don't know why my wolf ears are pink, but that's the way I drew my wolf, so that's how it is. What am I trying to tell you here? I want this ear to be pink. So to do that, obviously I can just stay on my color layer, and this is another reason why using the reference layers is super handy, because if I was trying to color this on my line work layer, I'd have to like draw in the line to do that. But because it's on its own layer, I can just draw behind that line work and fill this in like, like that. Now, if we turn off our line work, you'll see the pink ex extends beyond that. So I should just be able to fill this in. But what you need to remember is you have to turn off your reference layers to do that. Otherwise, it's gonna fill in the whole thing because it's based on the line work layer and that is not in the line work layer. So release reference and now we come back here and this is where the color fill is probably gonna come into play again. So if I hit this, if I use the paint bucket and I tap this, you'll see it filled in all of it. The reason for that is because my color margin is set to the absolute max. So what we're gonna do is just dial this back until we get our desired results. So go like that, and then I can just come in here and fix the uh, 
that little thing, that little nubby that I mixed up. I'm gonna turn my line number back on, and now things are good. And while we're doing this, let me just give you a little bonus tip. Because I was using this like gritty brush for the line work, but now my color is all really smooth, I don't really like that. I wanna bring some texture into the color. So an easy way to do this is to make a layer on top of my color layer and then use this little clipping mask button to make it so that it is clipped onto that color, which means that anything I draw on this layer is only gonna show up within that color below. So now we can come back in here, go and find like a, a green brush or a texture brush. I'll use, uh, what am I gonna use? I'm gonna use this crazy rougher from the same Woodland Wonderland set because that's the one I'm using and it's the one that has a lot of great textures. And I'm gonna grab black here and you play with the brush size a little bit. And just kind of come in here and just add a little bit of a little bit of grit and you'll see that I could like stay close to the edges and just go off the, the side and it's not gonna show up outside of my color because it's in a clipping a clipping mask onto onto my color layer. So now we can just come in here and the cool thing is because we didn't use a fill color for the teeth, I can make the inside of the mouth nice and gritty and darker and it's not gonna affect the teeth because they don't have a color attached to them. I feel like this is already looking much cooler, much, much more badass. And then you get to a point where you've done too much and you have to know how to just do enough to make it subtle. <laughs> One other bonus bonus tip while we're here, you can take all of this, put it into a folder, make a new layer on top of that folder, make that a clipping mask, and that clipping mask will clip onto anything in that folder. So what we could do here is let's say we wanna make this look even more weathered, a little bit more vintagey. What we could do is come in with like a, a white brush and just sort of draw on top of all of that to just sort of distress it even more. To kind of break up those black lines a little bit, just to beat it up a little bit, make it a little even more worn out. Grab a different texture. Let's try this waxy roller. And you'll see that this is not only applying to the color, but also the line work which is fun little, fun little feature. And we got a pretty cool look there, if I do say so myself. So with all these amazing brushes, it can be hard to remember which ones you liked and which ones you used. And that brings me to my next tip, which is sort of like a two-part tip. In your document, if you go into your brushes, at the top you'll see recent, and this is gonna show all the brushes that you've used within that document. And this is super helpful because you can easily go back in here and reuse a brush if you forgot the name of it or where it was. So if you're using this waxy roller texture brush, I'm thinking, I really like this brush and I wanna use it more often and I don't wanna go hunting for it every single time. So what I can do is tap on that brush and then you'll see this little star next to it that adds it to your favorites folder. And now when you go in brushes, you'll see all or favorites. In favorites, you have all your favorite brushes. Put whatever brushes you want in there. You have brushes from a ton of different sets and just put your favorite ones in there, the ones you use all the time. This will save you so much time. Let me tell you, it saved me a lot of time. Going in here, digging through these different brush libraries, trying to find the brush that I want, no more. Just save them to my favorites. As you can see, I don't use a lot of brushes, but I like them to be available when I need them. So I'm someone who's a little bit wishy-washy when it comes to colors, and I change my mind a lot, and sometimes I just wanna try some different options very quickly. 
An easy way to do this is to tap over on your adjustment layer option and choose hue saturation. And you can start pulling this thing around. But let's say you decided that I really wanna keep that yellow background. I only wanna change this one thing. You can also make an adjustment layer into a clipping mask. So I can just come over here, hit the clipping mask option, and now as I toggle through here, you'll see it's only affecting my wolf because it's clipped to that group, my wolf drawing. And you can do this with a single layer or a group, it doesn't matter. You can play around as much as you want and be like, oh, this is not any better. I do kind of like the green and the purple, but I don't like it with the yellow background. So I could just toggle this off by tapping the clipping mask option and you'll see that it is affecting the yellow layer below that. But I don't really like that either. So let's, um, let's put that back as a clipping mask and then we could just go in and change this manually. We could do the same thing on this layer, add another adjustment layer, and now we could play around with changing that background to something else. See if we can find something better. Maybe just go pure black. I don't know, you can do whatever you want. This is for you, not for me. Did you know I have a whole playlist of Adobe Fresco tips? You can check that out up here, and uh, I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed these five tips and you wanna see five more tips, let me know in the comments and I'll do another video like this. <laughs> Good talk. Bye.